Hi everyone. Um, it's my first speak, first speaking event ever. Um, I've never done public speaking before, so I'm nervous as hell. I will talk faster the more nervous I get, so I apologise for that in advance. Um, so I've been over a technocrat for the last sort of six months, and uh, this has just been a little passion project of mine on the side. So I thought I'd come and share it, and uh, hopefully somebody gets some value out of it. Um, so I've been sort of around agency land for about 15 years um, and spent a lot of that time in Melbourne, so I'm sort of down there. So in Melbourne, come to the Melbourne meetup, say hi. Um, now we'll get started. So this isn't a code dive on GraphQL. I mean, Adam did that yesterday. I don't need to show you the code. I don't think that's what this talk is about. My talk is mainly about like how do we build GraphQL schemas and how do we build them quickly and how do we build them for front-end developers or how do you get your front-end developers to build their own GraphQL API without having to dig into all the code. Um, so hopefully by the end of this talk, which is I'm going to say 65% live demo, um, <laughs> we'll have a schema at the end of it. I thought I might just put this slide up front. Um, you might not need GraphQL. If you've got an established Drupal website, just use JSON API. Um, it's there. It's your Drupal is in a box. You've got what you need. Um, if you're transitioning from a coupled to a decoupled site as well, and you've got pre-established Drupal architecture, just use JSON API. Use REST. Use whatever's comfortable. But if you're going like full headless, then this is this is an option for you. Um, but I just want to sort of get the preconception out of the way that. You don't need to use GraphQL. I'm not trying to sell or push GraphQL. I'm just saying it's an option and uh, use what you want. Take what you can from uh, this talk. Sorry, stay close to the mic if you can. Um, so I thought I'd just start out with you know the, the regular introduction of what is GraphQL. Um, well, GraphQL is typed query language. Uh, types give you structure and definition, meaning, um, can enable you to create reusable fragments of code. You can reuse that to uh, describe your objects and reduce errors and it's just nice having types. If you're a PHP 5 dev, types mean nothing to you and this maybe isn't the talk for you. Um, but if you're working with TypeScript or you're working with PHP 7 or you're working with Drupal in general at the moment, uh, then you're going to like types and this could help. Uh, two, what is GraphQL? Well, it's easy to use. Um, developers know where to get their data. It's all in one endpoint. Um, it has introspection, which allows you at time of development to look at what you're building. So you use tools like the GraphQL, which is built into the uh, GraphQL module. It's built into other tools like Postman. Um, so you know they can go and fetch your scheme for you and get auto completed happening. Uh, there's extensions for PHP Storm, VS Code. Like, there's cool stuff out there. It's really easy to use. Um, and I wanted to sort of show you a little bit of how easy it is to use. Um, and then three. Uh, it doesn't overshare, so your JSON APIs and your REST APIs, they just return too much data. Um, and Adam went into that a little bit yesterday. And that's kind of like, if I ask for A, B, and C, I get A, B, and C back. I don't get vomit of data on the screen. I just get what I want. Um, and you get it all in one request, and you get exactly it. So that's kind of the A, Bs, and Cs. Um, about four years ago, Drees put up a a blog post sort of like weighing up the differences between GraphQL, JSON API, REST, and sort of like evaluating each one of the positives and pros and cons and that kind of thing. And he kind of landed on, well, JSON API is the thing that suits Drupal the most. And if you are building Drupal, like a headless Drupal, just use JSON API. Um, that comes back to my previous sort of points, you know, like weigh up what works for you. But he did leave a nice little sort of statement in there. And it's, uh, there's, some, there's some cases where GraphQL is a great fit. Uh, so, what are some of those cases? I like to think uh, microsites. You can build uh, decoupled platform agnostic sort of front ends. Um, if you have complex data that requires flexible queries and mutations and you want to minimize overfetching and underfetching, then GraphQL may be a good fit um, if you've got campaign sites. Um, so, Jacob Rockowitz also wrote a blog about this in recent months. He's the guy behind Webform and Schema Org Blueprints. Um, and the full quote sort of is along the lines of my mistake when approaching GraphQL was starting with the Drupal GraphQL module, uh, looking at how to implement the backend API, which is a bit complex. Uh, you should have first looked how easy it is to use. Um, so, that's a great quote for him. 
also a terrible photo. Um, so how do we make it easier to use? Um, well, Jesus Oliveras, um, about six months to a year ago, started building GraphQL Compose, which took over the version 3's built-in schema generation stuff. And then I came on about six months ago to help write a patch and then end up rewriting it. Um, so <laughs> that's the Drupal community. Um, and so now we've got like a version 2 beta out, which only really works with uh, PHP 8.1 and Drupal 10, because I just don't want to support all the way back. Um, but here we go. So it's time for live demos. So I want to sort of just start off with the GraphQL Compose. We'll go from there. We'll build a schema, uh, show you how to query the data. In fact, I've got slides explaining what I'm doing. Um, so we're going to add some entities, add some fields, use the Voyager, sort of have a look around. What is GraphQL? Like, how can I use it? How can I get going quickly? Um, we're going to then make some queries and fragments um, and some routes. And look, if I've got time, because this is going, time is going quicker than I thought. Um, get in, like, this is all Drees, by the way. I just, Mid Journey AI is fantastic. Um, I just said, make, make him look like a front man for an, a 90s hair metal band. So there you go. Um, get into GenQL. GenQL is cool. Uh, so GenQL can create TypeScript, uh, TypeScript script from your schema. So you basically plug your URL endpoint in and it gives you back just functional JavaScript, which you can go and build cool stuff. Um, so if you get a chance, and if I, like, if I don't get to it, GenQL.dev, um, excellent tool. Um, so I think we are now going to go into live demo mode. I apologize in advance. Oh, screen mirroring. Display setting. Okay, I have a thing. All right. So I've got a basic sort of page here, um, and I've gone in and I've set up in GraphQL, GraphQL Compose. I've just sort of got a couple of the modules installed. So we've got the Compose module, and you can start there. Uh, so if I go to Web Services, GraphQL, edit that one, GraphQL Compose Settings. Okay, cool. So we have a basic page. I want to enable GraphQL. I want to load that with a single query. I want to turn on the body fields. Uh, let's say I want to enable images. Now, images is a media field, so I need to enable the media entity. Across to image, turn that on, enable single query. I don't need to and have an image. And save configuration. Go back to my shortcuts. Inside the um, GraphQL, we built this just by clicking those boxes. So we have a node page query where we're going to ask for something. It's going to return a type of node page. A node page has body. Body has text summary. Text summary has process. Um, header image has a media. Media can be a type of image. Image has image. Image is image stuff. So we've got our type data, we've got a union sort of tying our entity types together, and we can start to explore that data. Um, so if I go to home, so I've got a content page. I'm just going to copy this UUID there and go back to, I actually used the shortcuts module, how about that? Um, Voyager, Explorer, okay. Here we are. So in the right hand side, I've got this little query box thing. You can see that, cool. You can use this to sort of explore what we've built as well. So we can go into query, we see node pages. Node pages takes an ID. Node page will return node page. That returns body, body text summary. So it sort of mirrors that Voyager. We're gonna go in here. All right, node page ID is that. Hooray. Oh, don't refresh. Come on, nerves. OK, we've got a title. Um, we exposed our image. Um, so we have media or header image. Inside that was a media image. Um, and then we had image. All right. Cool. Um, so that's the beginnings of building 
uh, a data set. So now we're like, all right, cool, I'm not going to remember all these UIDs, that's impossible. Um, if I wanted to build a small app that was just a one-page thing, so it was like a, like a, a hospital landing page or a, or a charity fundraising page and you only needed one thing and you're going to build a completely separate front end and you knew that that was the data API and you knew you had your data model, then you could just do that. That would be fine. But most of you are going to want to build things with menus and routes. Uh, so we can go and just enable them. Alright, very well. So we've got menus, routes, I'll just turn those on, we'll get going. Structure. So we'll go back to the shortcuts, we'll take a look at our Voyager and just see if anything new has come in. So now we have a menu query which will return items. Items are a menu item. A menu item has children which can be a menu item, so it's nice to see circlical, clickable, yeah. thing. Inside that, we have a route. A route can have a type of thing, an internal, an external, or a redirect. An internal item has an entity type union. An entity type union is unsupported because we haven't enabled anything. So let's go back to GraphQL Compose. Check some boxes. Enable loading by route. Great. Back to our Voyager. Now we see route entity union returns a page. We're back. So we don't need to have this noodle. Take some noodles away. Um, I'll just skip past that though. We'll just keep going. So, doo -doo -doo -doo. what I'll show you here is this little explorer. We can use this to speed things up. So I'm going to have a route. A route path is going to be the home page. On a route entity internal, I want the entity. I want the node page. I want the body. I want the processed value. I want the header image. I want the media image. I want the ID name image. Whatever, uh, URL title things. Go. Ta da. So that's schema is now building. Um, and you can start to see a sort of pattern there. It's, um, we enable a module. It has a checkbox. You click the checkbox. Your Voyager shows you more noodles in your spaghetti. It gets nice and like, it just gets bigger. So the more stuff you enable. So if we enable more kinds of media. Uh, in fact, we'll go to demo two now. Um, and we'll build a little slight content model. How am I going for time? Okay. Okay, so in this one I've done basically the same thing. It's just picked up where that one left off. But I have paragraphs. So paragraphs have a type image and a type text. Um, so we'll go turn those on. Shortcuts, GraphQL Compose, paragraphs. Cool, I have an image, type image. I've already enabled these. Um, image and image. So if we take a look at our Voyager, we start to get okay. Route internal goes to node page. Node page has a type content. That's a type paragraph. So we have an entity reference paragraph union. Paragraph union returns image. Image, you know, we're we're, we're back. So if I go to the Explorer, we started. To, we've just added these bits. So we've got content, type name, on paragraph text get this, on paragraph image get that. There you go. So that's now using paragraphs to pull your content model in. If we go to the next sort of extreme on that, um, actually, no, I'll, I'll, I'll show you something different. Um, so this is GenQL. I think I've got enough time. Um, I've got it here in a little Lando file, but basically we're just going to run genql sort endpoint, pointed at the thing that we just created, and output it into the Drupal folder. I've already run that because live demos suck with these kinds of things. So that's created in one command, a schema in TypeScript. Um, so when you're building, and this can be used in GraphQL, this, oh, sorry, this can be used in React, in Vue, in whatever you want, whatever your flavor is. It comes with some little handy utilities. Um, and without going into too much detail, um, we kind of build our query like this, so it becomes on route internal, that's your sort of uh, your fragments of some sort, I guess you're saying on that type of thing. We're going to get the type name, the entity, and the node page, and then in, in we go. Um, so we get these tools that come out of it as well, so on is route internal, is node page, this is going to type script that into a type route um, content. Where are we going? Anyway, I'll just see if this runs. Lando. Dead. No, it 
does run. Cool. Um, anyway, so that's the TypeScript stuff. So then at the extreme sort of variations of this, I have um, two demos. I've got GraphQL uh, Drupal boilerplate, which is my boilerplate. Uh, Drupal boilerplate. Yep. Yeah, cool. I've broken it. Still works though. Sweet. Um, Oh wow. Well. Anyway, so this has uh node page, node page has paragraph union, which is going in weird stuff. We have a whole bunch of different paragraph types and we just got noodles everywhere, right? But if we take a look at it, it's pretty much just paragraph types. And we have accordions, blocks, media, quotes, sections, tables, whatever. So in the content, if I go to edit this home page, this is just using layout paragraphs. So uh I have a paragraph type of section, inside that I have Things and then inside those things are paragraphs. Um, so on the side of this local host is a little view app. This is decoupled using the GraphQL, um, and you know if I drag that across there, hit save, refresh this bad boy. There you go, it's down there. Um, so this is now using uh, Pioneer view. GenQL, GraphQL, um, and you can rebuild and restructure all that information out of that. So this is on my um, GitHub, that's available. I mean, there's, I'll put up a slide in a sec with the links to that, but if you've got Lando, you can go Lando start, and that'll give you a full working demo of this content model. Um, and then you go Lando dev in the front end, and then you, I've got sort of a bootstrappy sort of, uh, you know, GraphQL build going for you. Um, and I think if I go back to this slide, let's go enter. I just want to kind of leave on this note that with um, with GraphQL you can create data that's predictable, um, and you can sort of reduce errors other than the giant error that you saw on my screen, um, which was PHP. That wasn't. You can reduce errors, um, you can make it easier to maintain and scale applications over time, um, but the, the point of the GraphQL Compose was to get GraphQL schemas quickly um, and give that to developers quickly uh, without having to write any code. So in that time I built a schema um, that was usable by a front-end dev. They can use the tools like Voyager and Explorer to go and just use the documentation built into the API and get going. Um, and there's a whole bunch of, like part of the the great thing about GraphQL is the ecosystem around it. It is vibrant. It has a lot of tools. Um, it integrates well with things, and front-end devs want to use it, um, as opposed to GraphQL, which is just no, sorry, as opposed to JSON API, which can just be a confusing, overwhelming thing. Um, so at that is uh, there's two libraries or two two packages in there somewhere, um, and you know, get going. Thank you. <laughs> questions? Before questions? I can't see anything. Those two lights are really good. No questions? Nope. Cool. <laughs> it's good. Go download it. I don't know. And help me get through the issue queue. I'm trying to get security clearance, but I keep getting knocked out. I may have missed it, but that's what I'm going to ask. But um, can you build a view and then use Acquia, uh, sorry, use GraphQL Compose yep. to expose that view? So there's a whole bunch of extra modules in there um, that you know I didn't go through because I don't have time. Um, but it's got views integration. So if you're going to build something in Search API, it's got that. I've, I've done one mutation into the comment module. But at the end of the day, this is a read-only library. Oh, it's a 98% read-only library. Um, if you're doing mutations and that kind of stuff in GraphQL, I feel like that's business logic for your business and you should be writing those things. Um, or, you know, use the amazing stuff that's already there. Use REST and JSON API shortcut it. Just use that service to post the data. I don't know. It's, it's, it's there for the read-only sort of side of things. So, yes, there is views integration. Um, that works with contextual filters because I've got view fields. So you can embed a view field in a entity and then you can get the context out of the view field to do a sub request and off it goes. Uh, so yeah contextual filters work and filters work and so you can build a whole bunch of stuff. 
right, thanks. Cool.